Hello, steampunks. I'm Trevor Allen from the Hibernian Broadcasting Corporation. And today, I'm here with, at Obtanium Works in Vallejo, California with Major Catastrophe and Lady Impetuous, otherwise known as Shannon O'Hare and Kathy O'Hare. And we're here to talk about Obtanium Works, which is an art car studio here in Vallejo, California. Yes. Yes. We've been here now... Uh, 2012. 2012. Uh, we've been here since then, and we have produced a, uh, a fair number of art cars, uh, both for our own use and for commissioned art projects. And for festivals and events that we do in the Bay Area, but also... Um, sometimes outside of the state. Sometimes. So. Now, could you talk about your early influences, uh, your background as an artist, and uh, what started you making these art cars and Obtanium Works creations? Well, uh, first I have to say that I was born, born into an artistic family. Uh, my parents met in art school, and art was our main form of income. Uh, to uh, my mother were uh, painted pa uh, paintings uh, and we spent our entire childhood at art shows, street shows, galleries, uh, doing children's projects, but there did a lot of children's art projects. Uh, with, uh, so we would be the on hands, on paid interns for her <laughs> volunteer programs that she did throughout the Bay Area, but mostly known for working at Children's Fairyland in Oakland. Uh, I went, um, I got involved in, uh, so coming off of a background of constant involvement in art, we were actually expected to produce our own art, pro art, art product to sell. And so we were very much focused on how to produce art and stuff like that. Um, and how many uh, of the kids are artists? Well, my brother Kevin is a, uh, a quite a renowned artist in the pewter art field and produces... Uh, and the pieces that are Oh, right and here. he also is a very talented uh, painter. And he's actually painted these, uh, uh, what is it called? Altered uh, art. Altered art pieces, uh, taking... Uh, garage sale art Oil and, paintings, and yeah. converting them mm -hmm. into uh, adding bizarre and strange, wonderful creatures to them. Or uh, in this is, isn't putting the Nervous Hall into paintings, uh, showing versions of, of various times in the in the Nervous history. And then um, both of your sisters are graphic artists. Your son is a uh, graphic artist and an animator and, animator and, and runs and, an art department. Yeah. He's the art department. Head. Head. So it sounds like you have art in the blood. This is something that you've grown up with and... Blood in other parts of my body, yeah. I'm sure, <laughs> yes. Except for the ones I've lost. <laughs> <laughs> but you've got your artistic DNA. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you mentioned uh, the Never Was Hall, which I, I can see... Well, there's multiple images of the Never Was Hall here, but right. could you explain to, to people who've never been on the Never Was Hall and have never seen the Never Was Hall, could you explain what that is and, and how that came about? Well, the Nimbus Hall is, uh, first off, a three-story Victorian house on wheels. Wheels. That is self-propelled. And uh, while it, when it's fully set up, it can actually transverse on a flat level surface at a yeah. grand speed of about four and a half miles per hour. You can hour. walk faster than it actually so yes, is. No yeah. off-roading. No, no. off-roading, uh, no slopes, no slants. Uh, yeah, just flat... But it is self-propelled, um, and um, it came about from a uh, we. I was uh, got involved with a group at, at going to Birdie Man, building a clock tower, and so we built a beautiful Victorian-style clock tower, and it, it was quite a successful project. But it was a burn project, so that was burned that year. That was uh, 2005. Five, and so we were going. Well, what do we do next? What do we do next, and I. I had just finished reading uh, the Snow Crash, Snow Crash, uh, which was a cyberpunk thing. But it, in it, it mentioned that in the world of the virtual world, you're not bound by the laws of physics. So you could have a three-story Victorian house on tank treads mm -hmm. and go 80 miles per hour. And I went, well, we're a Burning Man, so... The laws of physics don't apply here, apparently. So let's build it. Let's build this, and that was my intention: was to build a three-story Victorian house 
on tank treads. Well, it turns out tank treads are like horribly impractical, and I will go in later about the kind of like the golden rules of art car building. Uh, but uh, what to say, the building it actually on a fifth, a fifth wheel travel trailer base turned out to be fantastic, useful, easy, much easier, more practical than a track base. So we then proceeded that year, and actually this is about the time I met Kathy. So how did I come into this <laughs> art world? Yeah, right? enough about the head never was off. How did your significant better find you, and, and, and why did she stay with you? Was it because you had a three-story Victorian house on wheels? And she said, ooh, ooh. this man's going somewhere. Yeah. No, I think, I think it's mostly due to some kind of mental uh, illness. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, it, um, um, so I have no art background. I, I definitely have done sewing and crafts and stuff over the years. But my, my focus in my life uh, prior to meeting um, Shannon was uh, Chinese medicine, and I do acupressure. So, in fact, the uh, one person overlap that introduced us was pretty much the only person we had in common uh, when we met. So I hadn't been on a date in like 24 years. So I was like, would you take me on a date so that I can kind of jump into the dating world? Because I knew he was single. I knew he had just, you know, left a situation in Texas. I'm not we will not right. go back to <laughs> No. <laughs> no one was looking for no, him. Yeah. No. No, one's no warrants <laughs> in California. <laughs> and um, we went out one time and that. Never came we back. Never, yeah, we never came back. <laughs> literally never came back. <laughs> So, and, her, um, and, the, and literally, I think that was the second date going down to buy the hall. I base. believe so. And, the, and, then wow. the, and then the third date was actually a power tool drag race. Yeah, which was a very unusual like you event. Do. Yes. 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 Uh, so the reason why I got involved um, was because one day um, when we realized our, our relationship was going somewhere right. other than just enjoyment, um, and we... Uh, we basically he said to me you know I can't get involved with you right now I have a mistress and I'm like okay. but I knew was, there was a sense of humor here that was really odd <laughs> yes, so I already kind of <laughs> kind of was like oh yeah and she's 12 feet tall I uh, know 12 feet long wide. wide 24 feet long and 24 feet tall but who's counting I'm right? not counting yeah so no one except when we go down the road and I the thing is that literally at that time she that was just a draw. I mean, that existed only as one, uh, actually, probably two drawings tops. That That's it. That's all the design. All the design on paper is literally just two drawings. And, and then probably about 200 scribbled. Okay, build this, build that, build the other. There you go. This is the legendary on the napkin. Well, so that's that. actually, yes. The first manifestation had the tractor treads. The second manifestation was designed around the the, the fifth the wheel tires and then there's like three or four different of uh, drawings of that at one time i was going to actually go to have a fake steam engine boiler on the tail oh there was, there was actually going to be this like whole contraption machine with pistons and stuff like that and then it was just like yeah we it's yeah. far better to just simply have the drop gate for people to sit on yeah than uh uh, so anyway, that, but so, that, so basically, you know, it, for my involvement in this is based. It, it was like, okay, either um, do something, get involved with helping with this, um, and or cut, or, or, or loose. Or cut loose. <laughs> <laughs> run, run for the hills. <laughs> didn't do that. So the mistress didn't put you off. You, no, you, you embrace no, the whole. I never embrace was the whole thing. And, because, and that's why she is. Lady, Lady Impetuous. impetuous. <laughs> yeah. I've done that numerous times. But um, but basically, Shannon needed somebody to run, um, be the cat herder of the 25-some-odd and, and volunteers. And fantastic diplomat in dealing with the Burning Man organization. Um, because they don't, they don't fund art cars. So when he... he uh, tried to get a grant from them they were like no we we don't fund art cars we fund art so um uh, you know but they did give us free tickets for all of our crew and i think we had close to 25 people yeah that for, first year yeah. what, and, what, so um, what was the first year you took the never was hall to burning man 2006 six yeah we built it in a year 
Wow. Yeah. Well, you actually built it in like four months. Four months. Not even the April, May, June, July. Yeah. But from almost five. from raw from raw material yeah. to an actual operating our car. Well, I well operating operating, <laughs> operating well. well not I mean we did actually drive out onto the playa and then sheared off our drive system and had to be towed back with a a actual steam uh, traction, traction engine yeah. uh, which was actually a beautiful fantastic shot and I'm sure kinetic, we have those kinetic steam works uh, took their vehicle out there for the first time and we were talking about oh we should do something you know together together well we, we had to <laughs> they had to tow us back home and, and that became legendary and yeah. so we actually had them tow us out again before we got repaired we yeah. were towed out again but we did have people that showed up because we were building this victorian house and so they showed up in costume and uh wanted to you know ride on the hall or be oh, photographed yeah. they, and so this one couple dressed yeah. in steampunk for the first time and it was their wedding yeah and they came out to the hall to be on be able to be on the hall mm. and we were stuck on the esplanade i think that's when somebody actually came up to me and said is this steampunk yeah <laughs> and no, I no, said, no 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 we didn't find out about steampunk until uh the guy that put on the first um, Northern California Steampunk Convention. Right, but no, contacted us. Right, right but, oh, but somebody. But there somebody did. at Burning Man asked mm -hmm. us if we were steampunk, and I said I have no now, idea. If someone asked you, I "This no is steampunk," idea. did you say yes, or are you like, "What is steampunk?" I said, "What is steampunk?" Uh, you I, were steampunk I literally before. did not know what steampunk was, and yeah. I was yes. actually. I don't think I didn't have this particular outfit, but I was pretty much exactly the way I am right now. I, this hat I was wearing at the time. Wow. And so it was kind of like. And we dress more Victorian, kind of. No, we are we are well, we are dressed exactly steampunk. Oh yeah, right, exactly. What do we do? I'm know? sure you've washed this since then. Mm. There's yeah. still playa. I oh see. no, there are still lots. Oh, you mentioned beating on a rock. <laughs> Traditional. You, you, you mentioned cleaning. <laughs> so, so you mentioned a wedding on the hall. Then that was at Burning Man. Now you you've had other. Oh, weddings at uh, on the on the Never Was Hall. Is that correct? Uh, I believe there's been well, there's one we don't want to wedding. talk about. <laughs> there was one that was yeah, the, there was one the, the marriage, marriage did not last as long. The, the, the wedding was actually longer, longer than the marriage. The marriage. <laughs> oh, I see. Oh yeah, and then we had the uh, the, the uh, lesbian couple that got married by the. Um, uh, Sisters of Perpetual, Perpetual Indulgence. Indulgence. Yes. yes, that was great fun. And then, of course, uh, the most famous, of course, is West Catherine West Sam's West. wedding, which has actually been documented by uh, Vintage Tomorrows. Uh, vintage Tomorrows. Oh, film. Vintage, vintage Tomorrows. Tomorrows. Vintage Tomorrows. Check Tomorrow. that one out. Of our, one of our cinematic endeavors. Yes. Um, but yeah, it is. Uh, that... And that actually um, occurred here the first year that we were here. So after we bought this um, place, the, the Obtainium Works shop in Vallejo, um, Catherine and Sam had their wedding here in July. So we were new new owners of this space, yeah. and, and it was, it's, it's, yeah, it's hall, legendary. Yeah, so the hall was set up in the shop yard here for the first year. Yeah. First and then every year we took it to Burning Man, down everything came and we packed it away. And then we'd bring it back here and set it all up again. And then down again. Yes. <laughs> I can't we cannot yes. count, cannot count how but, many times we have actually. Well, taken I, I've it been up counting because here. every I don't think you every, count. every time I take the hall apart and you put it back together, I lose. <laughs> I, I lose a year off the end of my life. Oh, I see. Well, at least it's off the end of your yeah, life. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, all right. right. Good. Or you put a notch in the Never Was Hall each time just to, you know, no, no. No, it there'd be nothing not, left of it. No, it puts a notch in me. I yeah. see, yes. <laughs> Fortunately, we can't see it. Yeah, no, no, no. No, no, no. It's all steampunk. Good thing I can sit down. <laughs> it's all steampunk. But now, as you said, um, it wasn't actually a steam uh, locomotive or a steam contraption. Is that correct? Well, no, it is not actually. Even though we did actually build a fully operational steam carriage, yes. Christie's Flyer, right, yes. uh, that, which we still have, uh, Kimrick, uh, the, the Kimrick Smythe project, and it's his... He'd always wanted his, to build his, a steam engine. Yeah, so. and it's his personal vehicle, right. um, even though we have it here. And you you built the carriage, you did the... I built all, I did all the woodwork, woodwork on yeah. that. They did all the metal frame, and then Kimrick did all the... Literally, he taught himself steam technology and built it 
and it and then and, and amazingly, absolutely amazing, it actually does operate. And uh, it went to um, it was the one vehicle that we took in to Maker Fair in two thousand six. So that was before the hall was yep. um, at Maker Fair, but I believe so, 2007, 8, and 9 were so, the three years we so were So technically, yeah. the Christie's Fire is the first, the first. art car mm -hmm. vehicle that we built. I see. And a full was, was operational. Uh, in fact, actually, <clears throat> it was operational for our wedding, which okay. was not on the hall, <laughs> well, uh, interesting <laughs> enough, uh, oddly enough. Uh, but we did have the steam carriage. Right. And this is actually a little interesting story about working with Kimrick. Kimrick has a, is an amazing contraptionist, amazing inventor, but he loves to tinker with something that already works to make it better. Unfortunately, usually dudes does it the, the night before. or the mm -hmm. day before you actually need to use it, and you have no idea that he's changed and <laughs> altered that. So when I actually got into the steam carriage to actually drive it, uh, and I <clears throat> and I actually have to drive it down a slope and turn and bring it around, and said, oh by the way, the steering is a little tricky. Uh, I changed <laughs> the ratio, so it's actually one to one. And this is a three-wheeled vehicle. I don't know if anybody's driven a three-wheeled vehicle or a, basically a tricycle. They have a tendency to flip over <laughs> quickly <laughs> on one way or the other. And I'm like, what? I had to have two of our groomsmen hang on to the back to make sure that, that I stayed the in bride the bride did not yes, get yes. <laughs> jettisoned. <laughs> So anyway, yeah, that it was, wasn't much that, of a slope. It was a, you know, we but got, it did it, steer it did. like this. <laughs> we had another incident where we actually blew off the top of the smokestack. That was an at, explosion, um, John a boiler explosion. We had a boiler <laughs> explosion, not a catastrophic boiler explosion, uh, but a uh, uh, a gas explosion mm -hmm. because Kimrick had changed it to see if he could get more efficiency out of the burner. The day before we were supposed to take it, it's like, anyway, so. Anyways, it's another <laughs> wonderful it's been an legendary adventure. story. It's a good thing. It's not a steam engine. It never was. It's not a steam I, I engine. I see. It's so run we by actually, what? Well, the first year, uh, so what we have, what we use to actually convey the hall is a hydraulic system. So we oh, actually have a hydraulic, hydraulic wheel motor which is uh, common in the industry for, if you just want to drive a wheel with a lot of strength, you have a, dry, a hydraulic drive motor. And this is oftentimes what they use for like cement mixers to drive a cement mixer around. So we actually have a hydraulic wheel motor attached to a rear end of a truck being used as the front end of the hull. So a hull actually steers like an old fashioned traction engine. It actually steers like this as opposed to like this right yeah so anyway so that wheel motor then is driven by a hydraulic pump which is attached to a gasoline engine which originally was actually a diesel agricultural single cylinder agricultural <laughs> engine that had to be hand cranked so it had this wonderful well, what do we use now? Uh, just a little Honda. <laughs> like Honda 18 horse Honda utility engine boy, that you really could use for a pump. Yeah. You know, use for a pump or any. You know, they just a, it's a standard engine with electric start. It's just like. Oh, yeah, we, I see. We've, we've, take... had, we've had a number of years oh, of problems God. with that, it. You oh. don't even want to go into those details because it would take <laughs> too long. But we eventually got a wonderful um, uh, mechanic that joined our crew, Andrew. Oh, yes. Uh, uh, Boson Nibs. Boson Nibs. He actually yeah. was uh, going to school here in Vallejo at the uh, Maritime Academy, uh, was introduced to us uh, at a friend's uh party because um, he did robot stuff. he was doing yeah. robot stuff our friend uh, uh dave caucus and he literally lived and, half and, a block and away caucus, from us. So I, used to, I stole yeah you did steal. andrew from him you did. uh and <laughs> he's never forgiven me except when he needs something but he he was able to redo <laughs> the engine and of course that was when you came and yes. uh, joined us for the 2015 tour of burning man which was our last trip 
to Burning Man with the Never Was Hollywood. Well, it was the last so far. Now, Ooh. Burning Man was was not the end of the road for the Never Was Hall because it's my understanding that it then went to Las Vegas. Um, now well, I know what stays it stays in Las Vegas, but it didn't <laughs> stay in Las Vegas, did it? So no, can you tell me a little no. bit about that? Well, the thing is, the hall actually has traveled to a number of interesting places throughout the years. We actually were in. Side Exploratorium. We went to Car. Uh, we also did the Carson City Nevada Day Parade. Nevada Day missions. Parade. Yeah. Actually drove it drove down, down the street. They let you drive it on the street. On oh, the yeah. street. Oh, yeah. the fools. And, yes. and like had to. And we had to go around all the around lights. the street yeah. signs and, and lights. You and I were up on top, and we had and a, a pole to pick up any, cor- any, lines. any power lines. Oh, power lines. Yeah, we yeah. were power in the lines. crow's nest. Yeah. yeah. Safety was it? Safety third. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. So anyway, so. Recently, the hall has actually been hanging out in Vegas on uh, Fremont Street. And that's because we, we, um, after being at Burning Man for so many times, um, a gentleman, uh, uh, Joshua Levine, who's got Fired Up Management, is his um, company. He is a... He's our art car agent. Right. Oh, oh, oh yes. yeah. Man. He literally is a used art car salesman. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and he got involved with Tony Shea. Right, and Tony Shea was started was starting at that time doing a complete revis- revitalization mm-hmm. of uh, Las North Vegas, End, yeah. the North End, which was like literally really bad, bad. Made, I mean, like the bottom of yeah. Solomon Gora. It was like <laughs> like it was it was basically <laughs> about five years ago. Um, you could not walk the street at night if you were a woman. Um, there were gunfights, and it was it was just really bad. So the Never Was Hall was, was hanging out, as you say, well, on the street. Right. Well, first uh, in Las Vegas. Right. Well, first off, uh, first we had a contract with Lyft, Lyft. and actually Lyft oh, did yes. a art park of Burning Man art pieces, of which the hall was there the entire time. Uh, they and actually was... traded out different art vehicles there. I think probably over twenty different art pieces came and went. And that was 15 months. So So you added another top to it. Yeah, that's right. Well, actually, that was uh, something that we actually did before we took it to Vegas is the the idea that we would create a a top uh, shade over the top uh, observation platform. The the, the Widow's Walk. The Widow's Walk actually now has a cupola over it and an ironwork railing system that it didn't have at Bernie. It's never had before. So it's a bit like Disneyland. It's, it's never finished. It's You're always changing something, making it better, making oh, yes. it more magical. And, and, actually, and, 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 and I actually have a whole out. list of things that I'm going to do to it <laughs> yeah. once I bring it back, once we are, well, it's actually back here now, but once I set it up again, I'm going to do a whole new rebuild uh, on it. And, well, we'll just do, a, you know, make it look really nice and and we've also talked about maybe uh, making it actually functional to um, Airbnb yeah. kind so, of so thing. people could actually stay mm-hmm. in it as as if it was a, a tiny RV. Yeah. Well, it's not a tiny RV. A it's 24 feet <laughs> tall. But it would actually have practic- practical to say, well, actually, I'm going to simply take a camper that I have obtained, and I'm actually going to take all the water system, the lighting, you know, the electrical system, and all the features of that wing and transferred actually into the hall. So that hall will actually have its own actual bathroom Bathroom and a galley. And then in the uh, lounge deck, we'll actually have a fold-out bed. Yeah. Well, you heard it here first. Uh, Airbnb in the Never Was Hall, coming soon soon. to a dimension near you. (laughs) Now, before we get too far afield of, of, of the Never Was Hall, there's a lot of other art cars that we want to talk about. Right. But it, you said it's come back here to, to Vallejo. Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, it, it, it exists here in reality, but of course, you've created this whole other parallel universe, mm-hmm. the Hibernian Steam Empire yes. that the Never Was Hall is a part of. Right. I, I know that because I've gotten <laughs> to work with you on five different plays that we've talked about. But where, where did that all come from? And what are track banshees? Yes. <laughs> well... <clears throat> I, I I created a backstory when I designed the hall with the idea that the I, I don't think I, I, I did not know about steampunk but really this is very much a steampunk where you've taken real history and said okay this is where I, this is where my history divulges from that history and ended up with something I want I've written a history of which Ireland becomes the the uh, 
intellectual, invent, you know, the, the technologically advanced empire in a world that's completely uh, dystopia, uh, this, uh, dystopian. dystopian world mm -hmm. of chaos are actually now going out and exploring in the two, 2020 uh, world. That we are time, you know, so they are now, but from, but their technology is Victorian, their steam aesthetics, powers. the aesthetics is, I think, but they have not only, well, they have steam technology, you know, steam technology, but they also have fantastic, futuristic uh, things. So, so even though it's a steam powered vehicle, it has a timey wimey machine spacey wacy tiny spacey wimey, wimey, tiny yeah. wimey they order transmogulator uh <laughs> which basically is a enables us to use as a plot device to, to transport to different dimensions but uh, the idea is that we've been charged and i'd say we by mythical by um uh, the academy of unnatural science the travel oh, the traveling the traveling academy, academy, academy of unnatural, unnatural science. science yes uh which we are all members of we've been tasked by the uh, ministry of insanity uh to circumnavigate the earth without the use of a zeppelin because that would be cheating well the, the trouble with zeppelins have kind of left a bad taste because the zeppelins are the choice vehicles and the uh, the weapons of oh, the right. evil. Oh yes, our our evil adversaries, the Voltgarians. Volt <laughs> the Voltgarians, because you always have to have good villains. Oh yes, proper proper and, villains. Pro you yes. have in, proper, in the union. Yeah, yes. you have to have proper villains to give yourself something to you know. It's like, well, we're doing this to because they will either do it first, or we have to do this to save whatever. And so anyway, so the Voltgarians are essentially a culture, uh, a uh, society of mad scientists. They are, to them, there is no moral boundaries for science. They're like, science gone bad. I see. Uh, Whereas here, we're sane? Uh, well, we're... You know, the, we're yeah. just not mad. We're not an, even annoyed. Actually. Well, we're not, thinking, like, we're not uh, yeah, we're, we, we don't, uh, we try not to do evil. Oh, I see. Well, they have absolutely no qualms. And so they've actually become weapon salesmen uh, they they take their death rays, their Tesla rays, and and you and sell them to whoever to uh, per, you know, to perpetuate all the wars happening amongst the principalities of what would be Europe, but instead is this like constant war zone. So they 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 profit from the chaos that they have created. Whereas Ireland has stayed out of that. The Hibernian, yes, and yes. I say Hibernia just to, to clarify, Hibernia is actually the Latin name the Romans gave to Ireland, which means the land of winter. Yes. And if you came from the Mediterranean, yeah, it pretty much was. Like, you mentioned the pan, uh, the uh, track banshees. Yes. Um, so the track banshees was a, a, an interesting uh, because a lot of a lot of our crew are women, and that uh, I said, well, the 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 idea of a steam powered Hall and I say a hall, H A U L as opposed to H A L L. A hall stays in one place, yes. whereas a hall moves. The Nimrod's Hall is actually a evol uh, an evolution of the traveling caravans created by the gypsy women, and the gypsy women in our story in our world. Basically, because their worthless husbands had sold off their horses, because horse horses became valuable because of all the wars, they 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 sold the last of our horses, so the they still had to keep moving. So the women figured out they could utilize their pots of boiling stew to drive steam to drive steam engines until they attached built steam engine kitchens on the fronts of their caravans and used them to get down the road because they had to keep moving to stay ahead of the law. So tracked banshees are the elite women engineer gypsies who are like, who you have to call upon if you want your hall to get down the road. And of course, where we come from, halls are really commonplace because we realize, well, we can't, if you're moving, you can't get taxed. <laughs> oh, I see. So there's, I lot, see. there's lots of these amazing, beautiful, elaborate, halls that have been built 
by the track banshees that are run by them. They actually are the engineers who keep them running. And so you actually have a track banshee contracted to you. Don't break a contract with a track banshee. No. We also have uh, had uh, gone into the stealing a little bit from H.P. Lovecraft. Ah, a uh, lot. And so you, as soon as you start doing with, uh, dealing with multidimensional characters and things like that, Cthulhu shows up and for some reason well for some reason Cthulhu is almost like the pet deity of the steampunk world you know or or at least the uh the kraken essentially the the octopus with a top hat and, and a monocle so we created a fraternal organization called the order of Cthulhu and so as a result we have our, our uh, feast of the tentacles which is actually our anniversary party. Yeah. So, so the anniversary is um, St. Patrick's Day. Yes. So, um, you know, next year actually, 2022 will be our 10 year anniversary of obtaining yeah, so, See, people don't realize, see, uh, St. Patrick was sent by the Pope to chase Cthulhu out of Ireland. And as soon as he got there, he went, oh no, what, what else we got? Oh, snakes? Yeah, I'll we'll do, do the snakes. <laughs> I'll leave, I'll leave Cthulhu. Oh, I see. <laughs> so Cthulhu was left alone. Well, yes. Yeah, well, he was just... have, you, have you heard the good news about Cthulhu? Have you heard the good news? Oh, yes. Yes, he's still dead and dreaming. Yeah, yes. so it's, <laughs> we're fine. Both live and dead. Yes, yes. Yeah. But the, the, um, the, the fun thing, though, is, is that we're hoping by next year, March, um, that we'll be fully open again and that we'll have a lot of fun we'll things. We'll have a... Huge. Well, a grand opening because we've been doing a lot of fun things here at Obtaining. Yes, <clears throat> when you make these constra- contraptions, what do you actually enjoy about making them? And and what uh, you're in Vallejo here, so I'm assuming you, you involve the community in your events. As soon as we uh, came to Vallejo, we went, well, we need to get involved with uh, the community. And oddly enough, we started out with a garden club. Yes. And so and we're we, going to join, we the actually, gar- join the Garden Club. We moved here in 2009. We could buy a house up. We were doing the garden show, which just the happened. The garden tour, yeah. We would have had a, a booth set up in mm-hmm. front of the museum. We were there, and that's when Frank came Mal up Frondo to us. Frondo came up to us, yeah. And he was involved with the garden tour at that yeah. time. Mm-hmm. And he uh, said, gee, I, you know, I've heard that you do all these crazy stuff. Would you be interested in getting involved with the parade? And uh, he wanted to put on... A, a holiday parade, non-denominational holiday parade. So we met with him and we sat down and talked and this, that, the other. And that's when we said, well, uh, it has to be non-denominational. Well, I said, well, what, is, what about something that's more fantastical, fan, like the doodah parade? We'll just cash in on the popularity of that. Oh, yes, yes. And what's put on the Mad Hatter parade. And then that way we can create fantasy and we can have the queen of hearts we can have the white rabbit mad hatter of course and i i don't remember did we commissioned the mad hatter that year or was that the following no year? i think it was the following year yeah, so michael saying... and valerie nelson um made the big head right. um of the mad hatter so um that somebody could wear it and right it's a wearable yeah. puppet yeah right yeah puppet and, and um uh, but the fur um uh, the first year we built the teapot. So yes, the, teapot the teapot was the first was vehicle. the first vehicle um, built for just that parade. For that, it was not a vehicle that would ever go to Burning Man. It was just uh, for that. Just parade. for that. And and at that point we had already built the trolley. So we built the trolley in two thousand eight um, to take as a small vehicle um, to small Burning Man because small. we wanted to take a break for we two wanted, years in a row of doing the haul. Right. And then we ended up pushing it most <sighs> of the time. Anyway, it, it had a, it had a electrical a system that did not like Playa dust. So, oh, well, Playa anyway, dust does eat it, electrical. It, it still yeah. has, a, 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 um, it, inherent in its design, um, some foobar pieces, but it, it was also in the um, that first year. The... Yeah, and actually been in a lot of our events, taken to uh, Maker Fair and, and like that. Yeah. Um, and then we also invited um, John Saragotti and Kirsten um, Mate. They they yes. came uh, with their uh, golden mean, which was this beautiful snail, <coughs> this fire the, breathing the snail. The mayor of Oakland's yeah. personal art car. Yes. Oh yes, yes. A the flaming snail. Let me show. Let me show. Like you do. Snail. Yeah, she loves it. Anyway, yeah. but they we we asked them to come up to be something you know spectacular. But of course, and it always has been. And from that moment forward, we had a fire art vehicle 
in it. So we invite a number of friends. We uh, go every time we go to Burning Man. We go and look at the coolest art cars and get them to come and Try. you know if they're nearby. And so it's evolved into. Yeah. So this <clears throat> this past um, 2020 would have been the 10th year 10th anniversary 11th time we had it but right. we didn't get to right. so this year i'll be um you yeah. know so it's been 10 years we've been doing that yeah and so that's yeah. always the first saturday in december yeah. here and in that, downtown Vallejo, <clears throat> and it goes down the main uh victorian downtown art uh, on georgia street and of so, course this is family friendly there, family there's marching free. bands marching it's bands. burning man but it's there's less nudity. Uh, yeah, well, well, yes. But, but, but you didn't have a pole dancing Santa. Yeah, well, that was different. Yes, but he kept his clothes <laughs> on. on. Yeah, but the, 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 the Frank has actually created it into not just a parade, but it's actually a holiday festival. Yes. So it's got all the sorts of lighting. things. It's got uh, the tree lighting, the uh, lighted boat parade is part of that. And then he's got all sorts of Alice in Wonderland events that happen that are very kid-friendly and enjoyable throughout the whole day right so it's a whole there, day and there's, then a, there's, there's like a whole plaza of, there's a plaza of vendors, vendors and, and, and activities for and, children yeah and then my favorite the beer tent yes and then there's <laughs> well, always like yes it's after the after and the it is you know it's what's great is is it's oftentimes the first thing that people go to uh during the holiday season and so right. it's very so it's the festive start, and, the start so, of the holiday yeah. season for uh, vallejo yeah and uh so it's become quite the uh the known event it actually um, goes far and wide throughout the entire region. So um, people come from all over the state to come to the parade because it's unique and it's different. And we have yep. built vehicles. So we built the teapot. Then you did all the motorized skirts. So we skirts. have the Queen of Hearts and the now, could, could you just so Could you describe those? Because people <clears throat> love those, especially the kids. And yeah, you the, motor, yes, well, the motorized skirts are a, a disability scooter yes. with a hoop skirt built over oh. it. Such that it looks like you're driving just a skirt, and then the ladies, uh, their costumes, costumes blend yeah. right into yeah. to the skirt. Getting back to getting back to what Obtainium Works has done of late. You mentioned the Mad Hatter Parade and all right. the wonderfulness and, and yes. insanity that that is. Yeah. Now, but you've created other events and you've done other things in in this uh, this adopted home of Vallejo. Yes. So can you tell me about those? <clears throat> Several times we have gone up to the Grand Connecticut Grand Championship up in Ar Arcadia, Arcadia, the kid goes Arcadia yeah. to Ferndale by way of Eureka. And this is the legendary, most amazing, most fantastic contraption. was the first year that they did it. Contraption yeah. race. And this oh, so is like friggin' the Olympics because not only do you have to have create the most beautiful artistic device, you know, contraption, you actually have to con drive it 40 miles on not friendly, uh, not user friendly landscape, uh, on sand, uh, down a cliff of sand, uh, a sand dune of dead dune. man's dead man's uh, drop. Dead man's drop. Yeah. Go along trails, maybe underwater. And it's uh, all it's all human powered. Hey. So we built uh, we built the parlor car the with parlor Dave car and Vicky with, Wilson. Yeah. And, and um, uh, that was in 2011. Right, and we got and that, a, was a, that was a four-person pedal, pedal power vehicle. vehicle, large vehicle. Yeah. Yes, and uh, we are, had the distinction of breaking down first. The first person to break down. So we got. And, and, and technically, the we rule were, is you have to get through the square right. before you can actually so get they that actually prize. Were, so, so they were they very nice. They were very nice to us to give us we that award because technically we yeah. did really start. Yeah. <laughs> no, Before we completely no, no, no. dismantled ourselves, we we you have to do a brake test, and we and in the brake test yes, we, we broke. <laughs> well, we took it literally. But the wonderful thing was is the community up there. So this guy oh my God. came to us and said, Here. "Here's the keys to my shop." I have all the welding I equipment. equipment. I have everything, need. anything you, guys you can need. Fix this. Go, yeah. go to my shop, open it up, and use my tools. It's a community of makers. They're yeah. trying oh, to help. Oh, they're, they're, they're fantastic. fantastic. Oh, but they're they're like really top notch. You know, these guys are beautiful bicyclists, and and not only that, but the entire vehicle is uh, supported by a big crew of people that are also dressed in costumes. They all have. So. They'll so we were come all up with the fantastic concept. I mean, we yeah. we do this we in our sleep. sleep. Yeah, right. So out of out of that, we um, we had so much fun, and it was it was crazy, and and just all sorts of great stuff that we can't go into the, too much detail on. But we came back and Legally. we said, 
<laughs> Why don't we do that in Vallejo? Yeah, put on our own version version of, of the. Uh, so anyway, so, so we so not a parade, a, a road rally then. Well, I I like to consider it a art uh, obstacle course. <laughs> so so in 2012, the year that we started um, uh, Obtainium Works, we had our first Obtainium Cup. The Obtainium Cup. And we um, you know, made little flyers that were very funny, and we sent them around to different places. And gosh, I think you guys have that one on your refrigerator. We still have that one on the refrigerator, yeah. That was the first time we just yeah. showed up in costume, yeah. and uh, we just going to watch. We heard there was an Obtainium <laughs> Cup race, whatever right. that is, and I said, but oh, did you? Yes. But did you get to watch? No. no. See, <laughs> and this, this may be of interest to you folks watching at home. The thing about coming to an Obtainium Cup race or any uh, Obtainium Works event is that if you show up in costume, chances are you will be involved in some way. The word is conscripted. <laughs> yes. Uh, this, this gentleman came up to me and said, Oh, great. I want you on the parlor car. <laughs> I was wearing a top hat at the time, and I said, Sure. And my wife got on, and we got to pedal. Said parlor car. Yes, yeah, said parlor car. Does not Once. move very easily. <laughs> yeah, but it, it was amazing. And and how many how many obtainium cups have you actually uh, created? Yeah, well, since, since 2012, uh, and then we unfortunately we had to cancel last year as well as this year due to the pandemic. The pandemic. Yeah, but time. um, so 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. So we've done eight. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it was the idea was the, the, why can't we do this here? Now here specifically, Mare Island, yes, right. the old Navy base <coughs> right. that was decommissioned, right. and so you decided to to what? Well, uh, because what? it's flat, and we really didn't want people <laughs> to have to go up and down hills well, like uh, they do in that other race. But uh, we wanted it to be more of a rally. Well, the thing is that I wanted uh, first off. Uh, the, they use the obstacles of nature there, the hills, the sand, and the thing in which I was going, oh yeah, I'm not doing that. <laughs> uh, that's just too freaking hard. But what I wanted to do was create uh, art, uh, weird, fun stuff that happens to uh, the, the participants along the way. So you basically are going from one... Obstacle. Vignette yes. or challenge. We call them challenges. challenges. Yes. Uh, as opposed to obstacles or hazards. Yeah, yeah no, that has challenge. It's challenges. Challenge. So and so better. I think the first year, uh, now we had built the monkey gun way back in uh, at yeah, the we did that for one of our fundraisers. Uh, so we actually handed that over to Mills. Right. Uh, and they built air powered compressed air guns. Yes. That, but they up the game more by packing the a six inch barrel with a salvo of stuffed animals. So when they shoot, they you get this boom. scatter shot I effect. See. So you have to ride your vehicle through uh, a barrage. And they, I think they have like four guns. Four. Yeah, they've got four that they, they use now. How is so. they're, yeah. they're really monkey. How it's yeah. yeah, this is one of the challenges. Yeah. Now, uh, other channel, I, I heard something about zombies. Yeah, right? zombies. Um, well, I basically have also created a mythology. Of course. Uh, completely, yes. completely, completely separate from the Hibernian uh, thing about the island having, because of course, being a secret mil, you know, having military, you have secrets and stuff like that. So, I basically cashed in on the idea that on, on the history of the island the fact that there is actually still on the island a group of zombies and by the way they're protected as a, it's a zombie uh, south end of the island is a zombie preserve that's why it's still fenced off uh, to protect the zombies from the public <laughs> I see, now yes. the zombies were actually brought to the island uh, by the then the secretary of the navy uh, Teddy Roosevelt uh, back in the 80, um, uh, in the uh, early 1900s, um, to load and offload, it was an experiment to see if they could use them to offload the dangerous munitions on the island. Uh, it did not quite work out because the, you do, the zombies became union. Now the zombies don't attack you; they're simply there, but you have to negotiate yeah. your way through the zombies. So you can either bribe the zombies you can convince the zombies that you're a zombie yourself or
Uh, you can prove that you have no brains at all. Oh, I see. Well, and, and, and we have a wonderful um, uh, theatrical group called the um, Nightmare on Mare Island folks, and they do a lot of they, Halloween They become stuff. the zombies. They, they're they're the taking zombies. over the zombie yeah. and actually have union buttons, yeah. and they're all dressed in workmen's so garb, they, they, all they torn. Have that, that whole fantastic, thing, fantastic horrible, horrible makeup, makeup and, and stuff, and stuff and like that. Yeah, so they, they've really taken it and, and, and with run it. with it. So what we've, what we've done is we've incorporated a number of different groups um, right. uh, in Vallejo that are doing and then artistic. the Sacramento Steampunk Society, Society yes. they actually hold court as the Queen of Hearts. Yes, and they, and have, they have taken out one section and made it into Wonderland. Oh, like a mad tea party. A mad tea party. Yes. They have the mad tea party, but they also have the Queen's croquet. And they say, you have to come to the Queen and, you know, uh, properly... Uh, Talk to the queen and have tea, and they and that's and then they also have don't they have riddles and things like oh, that? Oh, there's riddles. They're like a, the, well, I think the, you try to wake up the dormouse. Yes. Yeah, so the Sacramento <laughs> Steampunk Society really took over that particular challenge. So each one of the challenges that have evolved over time have been a, another uh, group of people yes. that have you know come yep. to our events. So it's, 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 the last challenge was uh, was robots. Robots, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Robots. Tell, tell me about the robot. Yes, well, we have actually been involved in uh, uh, actual battle bots. Uh, a, we had one robot uh, guy come to us and asked us to basically provide the flare because everybody, all the st you know, all the robot challenge people, were all a bunch of super tech nerds, all wearing the same T-shirt, all standing there with their arms crossed, going, "This is our, this is our robot. It's going to kill everybody. It's really, it's really bad." They, the first guy asked us to be to create a, you know, kind of a uh, backstory and like that. And uh, also, unfortunately, he, 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 I was better at building a robot that he was, oh, and as a result, that did not happen that year. Yes. Now, we came back later with a different robot specialist that we actually were involved in the devil egg robot, mm -hmm. which actually fought. Fought, in, yes. on, And if you get the extra extended version of that, you can actually see our robot actually fighting in the two times mm -hmm. that actually went into the battle yeah. arena. And, and we were, um, that was 2018. So right. the deviled egg in 2018. But now you, you get uh, uh, children involved in, in these, these art car right. events. And I've seen some some robots, some other right. things that you've done. So, so tell we, me more about that sort of thing. So I we actually have, uh, so we have a uh, ongoing work with the children uh, VCAF and the children arts program during the summertime. That's what, what is Vallejo, VCAF? Vallejo Community Arts Foundation. So they do a summer camp every year and do all sorts of art fun stuff. And So we actually build building. an art car every year yeah. with the children for uh, things. And so the first year we built a submarine. I took a disability scooter, made a metal frame for it, and then the kids covered it in cardboard and then decorated it with a pure obtainium, uh, <laughs> uh, door knobs, awesome. handles, like that. And just in case uh, someone is asking, what is obtainium? What is obtainium? What is I'm, obtainium? I'm sure people want to know what obtainium is, yes. Well, uh, for all you, you know, all uh, the internet people, of course, know of unobtainium. Well, unobtainium is a catch-all phrase for a material that does not exist, but is absolutely perfect. Well, Obtainium is exactly the opposite. It is anything you get for free or cheap or dumped on the street is obtainium. And we build from that which we have obtained. literally obtained or has fallen in our lap. So recycled, repurposed. Recycled, another... repurposed material. One man's junk is it's another man's, man's art. Yes. I see. Or it says, our, 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 our says one man's junk is, uh, is another man's vehicle. vehicle. Oh, yes. We're okay. almost always making vehicles out of the... Yeah, obtainium. So the so the so, submarine was in the um, Mad Hatter parade that year yeah, that you did that. Yeah, so. but the, the the children helped you make this. Thing. Right. Yes, yes. Yeah, they built that and painted it. Wow. And painted it, it, and it. Painted it. Painted it. And painted it some more. more. Yeah. <laughs> yes. They're like little magic brooms. Yeah. You got to point them at something, going, "Paint that," and just go. Just pour the paint on. <laughs> it's like, oh, oh and the, ro the robot, robot, came after right, that. robot, rhino beetle, and then the salamander. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, the salamander actually was a fire year. 
Yeah. That was all about fire, forest fires and all about the fire prevention. And so I actually made a fire salamander. Salamanders are legendary, kind of like, they actually are kind of like the same level as a phoenix in that they are supposed to be fireproof. And that's why salamanders are kind of, uh, become synonymous with firefighting or fire suppression systems and stuff like that. Vehicle and then, um, so this year you're doing a whole new project because the other group that you work with, Arts Benicia, um, through Liberty High here in um, Benicia, um, they are doing uh, recycled plastic because right. this year for the Visions of the Wild Festival, which started last year, went virtual when everything went online, um, we had a bunch of contests with um, the local school kids where they could submit um, recycled plastic arts. So it's uh, visionsofthewild.org is the website. So that will um, carry over because you're doing a recycled plastic art project right now with Arts Benicia. And then for the Vision of the Wild, we're actually going to make a globe, a six foot diameter globe, all out of recycled material. That it will be plastics that I've melted into sheets, created a globe surface that then we will then add cotton that's, and uh, this is all part of showing how we need to take deal care with the plastics, yeah. take care of the, you know, do something other than just throwing it in the ocean. And, and you know, use things other than plastic. So, you know, we're both, we've yeah. all gone through a lot and of... I'm doing nothing but plastic. Yeah, I know. He's, he, he <laughs> loves plastic right now. Now I love plastic. I used to hate plastic. Yeah. I, just, <laughs> I just like brass. Brass and copper. There are some real metals. <laughs> yes. So we've talked about a lot of the wonderful things that you do. Now, if people out there are still watching... <laughs> and they're interested in what you do. I would I wouldn't have lasted this long. Well, but you're, you're, you're still here, and I'm still here. Yeah. And I'm yeah, interested. Okay, right. So, if people are interested in getting involved with what Obtainium Works does, how does uh, how does one do that? Well, um, we actually before the pandemic had a Sunday open studio that people could come and visit us on Sunday, and we would do tours. And then, if they were interested in actually volunteer, you know getting involved with the volunteer aspect, which is literally making stuff. Uh, we have lots of projects that we need lots of hands to, think, especially now with the plastics, I have lots of chopping up plastic projects for people. Uh, it's like, and, and also, you've got a couple of commissions that are coming up, and yeah, you may we need have some, some help very, with that. Yeah, there'll be welding work, and basically people come, we kind of like, kind of uh, vet them as their abilities, and then uh, if they come back, it's actually not coming the first time. It's coming back yeah. is what they think. And I, we've literally had people going, oh, we want to be involved. And we never see them again. And then we've had people say, oh, I want to get involved. And they've never left. Yes. And, <laughs> and we've got quite a few of those. You know, like, so <laughs> we have a website. So we have obtainiumworks.net. Yeah, for people who use computers. Yeah. And, and, yeah. Uh, and there's a Google calendar on there that has all of the Sundays. So what I wanted to remind the major is, is that we're not open yet. So right. we'll be open um, the first Sunday in July. In July. Yeah. Yes, okay. because we're waiting for the um, state of California is going to be opening up in June. And we wanted a couple of weeks just to get all of our stuff together so we can be available. So people come um, between 12 and 5 right. on Sundays and um, just check the Google Calendar to make sure, like, if there's a holiday or something like yep. that, we will not be here. Yeah. Uh, let's say if people wish to donate uh, Obtainium, right. uh, always send the picture first, and we will let you know whether or not this is Obtainium that we can use, or we will direct you to a proper disposal. <laughs> or somebody else <laughs> or, that might Or like someone it. else that we, yes. we give away. We give away a lot a of stuff. A lot of stuff right. yeah. that we want the material to be utilized by people who know how to use, who, who have projects. So we get a lot of artists coming to us for materials. We shipped out a, like literally half the brass we had. Uh, Went to a, beautiful, a beautiful brass piece. balls. I, I gave away <laughs> brass balls to It's not a, something you often hear, folks. Uh, to a project that's going to be uh, fabricated in Atlanta. Yeah, and it's a civil rights protest um, sculpture piece that's being done. Uh, Dedicated to women, women who, were, who were experimented on in the 1800s. For the mothers of gynecology. Yeah, by the father yeah. of gynecology. So anyway, 
that is going to be a beautiful, spectacular piece, and we are we are proud to have had an opportunity to donate. We donated an entire truckload truck. of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Bottomed out the Bottomed truck. Bottomed out the truck. Yeah. So we're not doing the Obtainium Cup this this year, right? Um, because we normally have it in July, and it just festivals yet are yeah, still kind of challenging. It takes so much pre work, and it's a lot of pre work. So that's why also the Grand Kinetic Championship is virtual this year too. Yeah, cats. Or don't wrangle themselves. Yes, right. <laughs> so, so we want people to have a full year to work Perfect. on their contraptions. So, um, but people that are interested in building a contraption, right? Um, we we are here and available to help. To advise. Them, yeah, advise them what or to do and what not. Which really, that's a perfect segue into your last question. So, uh, the last question I really have is: I'm sure there's a lot of makers out there and steampunkers and that Venn diagram overlaps of people who want to make something like an art car. Now, what advice would you give to someone out there who wants to create an art car? Say, like a three-story Victorian yeah. house on now wheels. That one, that one yeah, I don't for, think. <laughs> first, I, I recommend you uh, seeking professional help, yes. as, like a psychiatrist. <laughs> I see. Um, Build so, something that you can actually um, tow on a trailer, okay. and it goes underneath yeah. the uh, uh, the correct height for, for traveling. traveling. Down. So, Instead of having to have a yardstick out to make sure that the never was haul in traveling form oh, actually went under gas that station. underpass. Oh gas station. And gas station, gas station yeah. roofs. Okay, yeah. so yes. Okay, so there's first off, it's really someone may have an amazing, fantastic idea to build some amazing thing. First off, I say, what are you what are you going to use it for? How often are you going to actually use it? And how are you going to get it there? How are you going to get it back? And where are you going to keep it in the meantime? So I've seen a number of art, beautiful art cars die due to a lack of storage that they've had to be scrapped because someone could not keep or afford the storage of said vehicle. Another death of, of a lot of art cars is it's built on a vehicle that's about to die. <laughs> I because see. of course you got it for free, yeah, and you can build this thing on it, and you've spent all this time building this beautiful, fantastic body, and the engine dies, and the guy at mechanic said, "Well, you got to take all this crap off so I can even get at the engine, and it's going to cost you three times more than the vehicle is worth." Uh, so you, I was saying, so you want to start with a vehicle that works, a reliability of a vehicle, or something that is does not require. A um, it could easily be replaced, like a, a disability, like a golf cart, or something that can be take the body off, put the different golf cart in, put it back on again. Um, so golf carts are really good. Disability scooters, scooters we've well, used a lot of those. Okay. <clears throat> disability scooters are free. The batteries are not. Yeah, they're yeah. they're they're, yeah, but they're to, still replaceable. They, yeah, they're replaceable. Um, but once again, you have to go. What uh, like we build vehicles for parades. So if you're going to use it in a parade, uh, our, our friend Gil and his beautiful replica of a um, uh, 1905 Oldsmobile. Fantastic vehicle. He did. He's put an immense amount of work on it. The trouble is, it's too fast. Yeah, and, and he can't slowly drive. He has to drive around in circles. He That's why drive, you see him. Oh, big, oh big, I see. Big, yes, yes. Well, basically, it's kind of like a bicycle. You have to drive, you know, a bicycle. You have to ride it. You cannot stop and start, stop but start. So you have to look at what am I using this vehicle for? And someone said, oh, I'm going to have lots of people on this. Yeah, you... You know, if you're going to have other people riding on the vehicle, you have to deal with a lot of safety issues. Yes. And you, and you don't want children because yeah. if there aren't straps to hold them down. Yeah. The, the, I've been stopped by police. I, a policeman who really hated me, but <laughs> I was stopped. And he actually had a good point that even though I had a mother and her children, she was holding on to them. It was, yeah, Not, and we were going slow, but still. The yeah. thing is that also there's all, there's all these legal issues uh, if you go, oh, I built this fantastic art car, I'm going to drive it around my town. Yeah, you can. May not be. Able you know, to. It depends not, on not where you live. Not street legal. Not yes. street legal. Yeah. If you take a street legal vehicle and alter it into art car, you got to make sure that you've stayed within your st your street legalness, that you're in the building of this fantastic thing, have not 
stepped over that line. Basically so. made it unsafe on the street. Like or, having or tentacles or, or arms <laughs> coming out, thrashing around. Or oh. you use the wrong glue, and so therefore so you it, fall it off. Sheds. Oh, it sheds. It sheds. It sheds. E6000 does not take on highway speed well. Um, <laughs> Important safety tip, folks. E6000, it's good for some things, but not at highway speeds. Yeah. But so you're, you're always available for people to come and advise, talk and, and, give, and, you and know. advise people on these different aspects. So. Yeah. Now, yeah. As, as we're coming to the end here, uh, if, if folks would like to get in, in touch with you or if they'd like to donate uh, either Obtainium Works or money, money? Yes, any, any sort nice. of support for the, for the art Legal and the tender? community. Legal <laughs> tender? Yes. Well, perhaps. Dirty you look at it. Like, how, how could they get in touch with Obtainium Works? I'm... That, that's ObtainiumWorks.net. So make sure you have that first eye. And uh, that gives you all the information. There's a wonderful page on um, donations. And we have all sorts of fun things coming up. We'll be doing uh, Vallejo Open Studios um, in November. And I think that's the second weekend in November. So if you haven't had a chance to come and visit us um, before, then uh, do come then because we usually have uh, things set up for that two-day right. open studio with lots of yes, fun things Yes, and if you come and visit, please exit through the gift shop. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's using one of his titanium. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, yes, oh, yes. yes. We, we saw boxes of those. Out the we can't give this <laughs> away. <laughs> I get yes. one of these, right, for the end right. of the Thank you. Cheers. You don't have one of these? <laughs> sure, five of them.